Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back. I'm Boomy and today we are watching The Insane Transportation of a 17-Ton Magnet by Real Life Lore. Yes, this is another video that I wanted to watch again from Real Life Lore. Um, yeah, aside from the first one, I don't think anyone has suggested another Real Life Lore video before. But I've been fairly hooked on the channel since that initial suggestion. That's why I've been uh, watching these without... The suggestions. I'm not really sure what kind of magnet they are transporting uh, and also all my uh, logistics knowledge came from American and Euro truck simulator so yeah I don't know how hard this is gonna be I'm not even sure if it's uh, an electromagnet they can probably move that no problem I think depending on how big it manages to be so if it's just like raw magnet then i'm not sure how they can shield the the magnetic field unless if the container itself also generates uh, an opposing magnetic field that's the only thing you can think about but yeah i'm excited to check this one out because again this is a mystery to me so yeah, let's just go ahead and check this out. So remember, if you like my reactions, don't forget to leave a like, let me know your thoughts on the video down in the comment section below and consider subscribing. Also, don't forget to leave your suggestions on what I should check out next. That being said, let's go ahead and watch the video. This video is made possible by Brilliant. Learn complex topics simply for 20% off by being one of the first 200 people to sign up at brilliant.org slash real life floor. Okay, so here's a big challenge for your brain. Let's say that you're here in the town of Brookhaven in the middle of Long Island, and for whatever reason, you've got a 17-ton magnet that's 50 feet wide, and your job is to transport wide. that monstrosity Whoa, halfway that across America easy. to Chicago, way over in Illinois. How would you go about doing it? Well, Now, is it a one-piece magnet, or is it like broken down into an, uh, a lot of pieces? Because broken down, that would probably be a lot easier obviously but if it is just a whole piece of magnet then that's gonna be a problem if you type out the route in google maps you'll see that the drive is somewhere between 14 and 15 hours long but there's a really big problem that you'll immediately notice transporting a 50 foot wide magnet down yeah. the suburban roads of long island may be difficult but it probably becomes just about impossible when you start getting into new york city the quickest route takes you through queens the bronx and even over the northern edge of manhattan while moving across two bridges and specifically the this bridge right here. The Throg's Neck Bridge only has a maximum vehicle width of 15 feet. So our 50 feet wide magnet just isn't gonna make it through. Oh, it's that 50 leaves feet very few wide. alternative options. Oh, and these damn. are just some of the many, many logistical challenges that a team of movers had to actually consider back in 2013 when this became one of the most complicated delivery operations ever attempted in the history of the United States. Holy the shit. customer who was wanting the magnet was a physics lab called Fermilab just outside of Batavia, uh, Illinois. Yeah. I've Chicago, heard of them before. They wanted it to run some of their own experiments on a particle called muons. Of course, they could have just built their own magnet, but that probably would have ended up costing them around $30 million. Yeah. And luckily for them, there happened to be another lab over in Brookhaven that had built the exact magnet that they needed back in the early 1990s, and it had been sitting dormant, collecting dust, and doing totally nothing for the past decade. Was it donated? So, in theory, if they could manage to transport that magnet from Brookhaven over to their lab in Batavia, for less than 30 oh, million dollars well they'd come out ahead and save some money the stage was all set but moving a giant magnet halfway across the country came with numerous complications of its own like whether to drive it fly it or ship it on a boat Regardless of whichever option they chose, oh, can you in ship order it, to though? transport the magnet, the movers would have to be extraordinarily careful because even the slightest twisting or flexing of the inner coils inside of the magnet by even a few millimeters would have been enough to cause severe damage, which would have ruined the magnet forever and basically wasted the entire effort in moving it. For these reasons, both FedEx and UPS refused to help out with the move. Transporting the <laughs> magnet directly yeah. across the land that the entire been a problem. way was ruled to be too risky and too inefficient, while transporting it in a plane was ruled to be too expensive and also pretty risky. That left transporting it by ship, and so, after a lot of intense planning sessions, they really did lots of doubt, and with the support of all kinds of agencies and specialty moving companies, the final moving plan was eventually set into motion on the morning of the 22nd of June, 2013. <laughs> These are the type of trucks that I drive in uh, American Truck Simulator right now. Though I don't do a lot of uh, like big over, uh, overload hauls like this. 
It is still very, very good. At first, the ring was carefully moved out of its old laboratory site in Brookhaven and loaded onto a specially adapted flatbed truck. At the same time, the movers attached yeah. a 45 ton special Oversized metal apparatus load, to I mean. it to keep the magnet as flat as possible and to protect it from any damage. From there, the flatbed truck carried it very, very slowly along the highway to the nearby Smith Point Marina, where it was then loaded up onto a waiting barge by a ludicrously massive crane. And from there, the barge spent about a month at sea carrying oh, the magnet all the way down that was the east very coast, risky. around the tip of Florida, across the Gulf of Mexico, and then towards Mobile, yeah, Alabama. I was I was wondering how they were going to transport this by ship. Uh, I was thinking that they would go, I'm sorry, I'm pointing with my hand. <laughs> uh, they would go up, but as you can see here, there's no way they can get it uh, in between these without uh, a lot of complications. So they are going to go down. No, they're not going to follow upstream. Okay, so it cuts off here. So they're going to go down here in mobile and again, drive it. Is it any nearer than this way, though? Alabama. And as ships have done in North America for centuries, the barge entered the Mobile River and sailed it all the way up oh. towards the main path. Oh, shit. All right. So it is entering a river. Path of the Mississippi River and then sailed that all the way up to the Illinois and Des Plaines Rivers Holy before shit. finally arriving at the port of Lamont, Illinois, which is incredibly only a 37 minute drive away from the Fermilab complex over in Batavia. By simply carrying the magnet on a truck for a few miles in Long Island and then transporting it on a barge from there, the team had managed to get the magnet nearly the entire way after only about a month. From here, another ludicrously massive crane took the magnet off of the barge and onto another specially adapted flatbed. <laughs> For a second there, I thought he was they were going to put it on the truck. <laughs> Ludicrously massive uh, crane took the magnet good. off of the barge and onto another specially adapted flatbed truck. While under normal circumstances, it does only take 37 minutes to get from yeah. the port to the research lab, the truck drove the magnet at a snail's uh, pace, and it took man. more than three consecutive nights of driving all to travel a distance of just 32 miles. That is an average pace of just 10 miles a day, and so, had they used trucks to drive the magnet the entire distance over land, it would have probably taken them at least 90 days to accomplish. Instead, the whole journey only took the team 35 days to pull off over an adventure by land and sea across more than 3,200 miles, finishing at the end with a more than 3,000 person party to celebrate the wow, giant magnet's newfound persons. home and successful trip. The magnet was eventually installed within the new lab in 2016, and it became operational once again in 2017, after nearly 16 years of remaining totally dormant. And the That's data cool. taken just this year from the magnet is already indicating that there is compelling new evidence of brand new physics yet to be discovered. That's it is challenging nice. scientists and researchers across the world to come up with bold new theories, and it's pushing our society to ever greater heights. Now, after That's watching this, know. maybe you're wondering how magnets and electricity actually all work. There we go. Before I made the this video, segue. I really had no idea either. All right, let's skip to the link. Yep. Yep, here we go, guys. If you want to get brilliant, go ahead and use brilliant.org slash real life floor. And yeah, really interesting. I wasn't expecting them to use a barge, that's for sure, because uh, like I said, uh, I thought that they were they would have to go around the top, but apparently the Mississippi River just cuts through all that and take them so close to the lab. And yeah, a very old and dormant magnet is now in full service to get us more science discoveries. It would have been very devastating if, like, upon transportation from the uh, how do you call this from the truck down to the lab if something were to happen that would have negated all the effort and well everything that they had to go through to transport the magnet i'm not sure as to why it can't be just cut up into segments and then um reattach it 
again, I do understand that they need to be very precise, but couldn't they calibrate it again? Who knows? I'm no physicist. I'm, I don't know shit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, very, very, very interesting. And now it's serving us uh, a very good purpose. So yeah, that's just gonna be it for me today, guys. Links to my Twitter is down in the description below. Go ahead and check it out if you want to. And if you're new here and enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like. Let me know your thoughts on the video down in the comment section below and consider subscribing. Also, don't forget to leave your suggestions on what I should check out next. That being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!